It's like no one had ever done anything like that. In it's just like a magical, like so, so many like DIY people in the like same experience. Place. Just like yeah. a bartender, oh, like, and I get to go down there and they judge you, know, you based on the, the merit of your you know, art. The fact like, that they just don't like it. Paradise can't work. Stuff you don't get to experience otherwise. I was literally like at least a hundred thousand people. The ideal sort of drugs. There's a bunch of people from our family members standing there watching us. Just a really good idea that puts their like blood, sweat, and tears into it. Like sets it up so that punk rock god flicks a switch, the beacon, punks assemble. It was really kind of like a shock to us that this many people wanted to be a part of this and wanted to play, wanted to attend and everything. So when anything gets hyped up like that big, you start to be like, holy shit, this is too good. Over time, you'd see the lineups that were offered at the fest, and you just knew that you wanted to be there. When it turned out that I'd be on the same continent um, as when the 10th anniversary was happening, that's, I guess, how uh, the fest or bus tour came about. Plan is to travel from Massachusetts down to Florida. We're wanting to travel anywhere that we get the chance to to speak to the bands who are playing, and, and then obviously once we once we do hit Gainesville, it's it's fucking party time. for today is to head to the Middle East and actually catch a couple of shows. Uh, Jeff Rowe playing a matinee show and some other local bands as well as um, hopefully checking out the copyrights and Wilhelm Scream later tonight. Uh, I think the show's sold out so we might have to see if we can uh, scam tickets somehow. We'll see how we go. So yeah, welcome to Boston. And I think the thing that Boston contributes to um, punk rock music and always has is that Boston is a like, tenaciously working class city. Um, and the bands that is always on their minds. Like There's these old bands called like Pinkerton Thugs, um, even, even old Unseen stuff. Like If you write about the true character of where you're from, and I think Boston does a pretty good job of that. Even if you're, I mean, the Murphys, like, I mean, even bands like that that are huge, like you can, tra you can trail that right down to the lower rungs of the bands that are playing shows like today. That was my first fest last year, yeah. And it was crazy, because I had heard about it for so long and so many of my friends had been to fests from Boston down to uh, Gainesville and then staying three days and paying the ticket price. It never made sense for me and I was always touring on these like small tours. So when I actually got offered to play fest, I was, I was literally jumping up and down. The, f the fact that I actually have pre-fest shows with bands that I admire is a huge leap from last year. There's so many shows that it almost makes it worth it to, like, for me, it's almost worth it to play some shows and to go to some shows and to stay with some friends along the way because and I'm, I'm still, like, kind of, like, bouncing my way around the lower rungs of, like, this whole thing. But this year is kind of, like, I've seen and played with a lot of these bands now, and now I'm, like, I'm really looking forward to playing with a lot of bands. I'm doing just as good now as I ever was. I got a love that makes me... Eventually befriending the doorman, he let us in. People were just going absolutely ape shit for Wilhelm Scream, but I guess this is as close to a hometown show as they get. The Northeast has always been a, a, a big hub for uh, for bands and scenes, Boston more so than my city of New Bedford, because it's not completely like overwhelmed by like, the idea that like you got to be fashionable. You know what I mean? It hasn't been like New York yet. Can you remember your first fest? When was it? Uh, about three years ago. It's like if America, you guys call us sepos, right? Yeah. Picture it's like a tank, like a sepo tank, a septic tank, filtering down into Florida, which is kind of what happens in general with humans, in American humans, that is. Uh, but like all these bands just converge, you know what I mean? Like 
So sometimes it is hard for smaller bands to jump on a tour or play a city where they normally could because, like, can't play here. No effects is playing here. You know what I mean? Or a D4. Tony, I love you. Thank you so much for all your help. Uh, if you find me wasted in a ditch, I'm staying at the, uh, where the fuck? The first one to this one, it's honestly the same theory on why we're doing it. I did this festival because I was unhappy with another festival. We're doing shows for Hot Water Music. We're doing shows for Promise Ring. We're doing shows for, you know, Texas Reason. Why aren't they playing this? You know, why aren't these labels involved? I'm in New York. I got a gun. Let's go to a Broadway show. Occupy Wall Street, um, we read about just a few days ago. I guess this is one of the biggest manifestations of people's frustration of the whole heap of shit that's gone down in America over the last few years. You hope that something like this isn't just a, a bunch of gimmicky slogans uh, or anything like that, that it actually I don't know, steamrolls into something that might change something. I think that it's time that we make some changes Changes within ourselves Leap is a right behind Too many of us like that Here's 315 Bowery where uh, DBGB's used to be which is now taken up by a very uh, fancy and fucking expensive boutique rock fashion outlet It's kind of weird to see they've left some of the walls and some of the roofs and all the stickers and posters intact inside, it's very sad to be honest and um, a bit weird to see it all combined with $500 vests. <laughs> so it's progress I guess. I was planning on trying to get a hold of some bands while we are here as well but a lot of them are out in places like Long Island and Syracuse and Rochester. Um, hopefully there's still a chance we might catch up with uh, one band who are in downstate New York, but um, who knows whether that will, will line up or not. The life in this room could not the snow outside. If we try. We played Fest 8 in a previous band, and the last two, or nine and now ten, were As playing timeshares. Time we showed up at Fest 8 with uh, boxes of the new band's demo. Yeah, we were to, slinging them to, around. Hit the ground running. We, uh, we play a lot in Brooklyn. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening down there. Maybe sometimes too much stuff. Yeah, it's a lot. A very, it's very busy area, very busy scene. There's a million bands that are just awesome in New York. There's so much going on now, like in the Northeast. There's so many bands like, uh, just killing it right now. If you tour around the country a bunch, and then you come to Gainesville and see like this person from there and that person from there, and they're all like on the same street hanging out, that's pretty cool. We I mean, did not think we were, we they were filled up coming pretty, down this year. They filled up pretty early this year. I mean, it's a good it's a good lineup, you know? Mike bought tickets. How many tickets did you buy? <laughs> bought six <laughs> tickets. Bought six tickets. Yeah. Anyone want tickets? <laughs> Anyone want tickets? Yes, right. we got them. Twice the price. <laughs> you get so many like-minded people in the same place yeah. for that long. Like, you, you can't really lose. It's three days of never not having something to do. It's know? true. It's, like, it's true. And nobody, nobody will let the day end either. Uh, everyone's so stoked to be there. It's unbelievable. Yeah, this is one of those things the... where I could like go to my friends from high school that are like, "Oh, you still playing in that band?" I could be like, look, the Bouncing Souls are playing. You know them. You've heard of that, right? <laughs> and, uh, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs>